Greetings. Here in sunny St. Louis, it's well over 100 degrees, and in case you didn't notice, the video quality on these videos is pretty good, right? That's because my camera's real fucking expensive. The downside of that is that it's easy to break, and uh, it can't take the heat very well. So I can't do a whole lot of super extended videos right now, because if I burn up the chip in the camera, then you're just going to get cell phone videos from now on, so... It is what it is. Anyway, there's been a little bit of progress. Today I just wanted to kind of get into the details of the alternator swap. If you'll remember from an earlier video, I got a 3G alternator from a early 90s Ford Taurus station wagon. The reason I went with the station wagon is because generally station wagon will have the 130 amp alternator versus the regular Taurus sometimes having a 95 amp one. Uh, it's not always the case, but it's a rule of thumb. Uh, I got mine from a wagon. Uh, there's also another way to identify if you have the higher amp one just by looking at it, so I'll show you that. Now looking at the front of the alternator, uh, there's kind of like a, a Y where these things are raised up right here. See like three different legs here. If you count these holes, one, two, two holes, that's the higher amp. So with those two holes, that's the 130 amp. If it has four holes in that space right here, then it's just 95 amps. Uh, either one will probably work for any kind of modern setup you're doing. The reason that I'm having to do this is because we're gonna run an electronic cooling fan from a uh, Lincoln Mark 8, which takes a really high amp draw and you can't get it without, can't use it without one of these higher ones. Here you can see, this is the guide we use to see which kind I had. This here, you have four holes. This here, you have two. So 130 amp, two holes, 95 amp, four holes. Once we identified that I did indeed happen to grab the right one, the only thing you have to worry about is the ear spacing. So right here to here, you have the right one. It's gonna have the same spacing as your original 1G alternator. So if you're a fifth or sixth gen guy, like this this truck is a sixth generation F100, then what you're looking for on this ear spacing is a uh, eight and a quarter inch ear spacing with pivot mount. Some people will tap threads through this for the bolts through the ears because this is smooth. We just, you know, grab a, a, a nut and a lock washer so because it needs to be adjusted for belt tension anyway. So eight and a quarter inch ear spacing. Uh, the clearance is pretty tight. So you can see right there between the head. So uh, it's close. If it's not right, it won't fit. And I went ahead and went to uh, O'Reilly's when I got the $5 Mega Fuse and got a $5 belt to uh, pop on there and then see if it's lining up. And it's lining up fine. We did have to put a, uh, we did have to shim this pulley. This is the pulley off of the original 1G alternator because these, when you pull these from the junkyard, will have a serpentine pulley, which won't work. So we popped the pulley on from the original alternator and without shimming it, this rubbed up against the alternator. If it's rubbing at all, you cannot run it that way and you have to shim it. So we just popped a washer in, shimmed it, and uh, it's good to go. It's lining up nicely. So the best place to find these, uh, as you can read right here, I got my information from a forum, is uh, from Ford Tauruses, some 1990, any 1991 or 1992, and some 1993 through 1999, non-dual overhead cam Ford Taurus should have the right spacing, the right size. And if you want the 130 amp one versus the 95 amp one, that's when you look for the one that has two holes versus four in that section I showed you. Now, for the wiring, it was it was really easy. We used this as a guide, which I'll throw a link up to in the description, but uh, it's a 130 amp 3G alternator installation for a 65 Mustang. It worked the same, uh, not a lot of differences in the old Fords, really. So this is what we used as a guideline for ours. It's really easy. Like I said in the earlier video, whenever you find this alternator in the junkyard, there's gonna be three wires coming off of it. One's big, like this, and there's a smaller yellow wire and a green wire. Whenever you go to pull it, get it all the way to this fitting here. It's a pain in the ass. You gotta pull, you gotta cut the harness out and get it, but those three wires coming off the alternator, get the entire length of those wires so that you have 
the amount you need because that Taurus has a much smaller you know, compartment than your truck, so you need as much as you can to work with. So basically, we just, uh, you can see here, it's all wired up in, soldered in one wire, and uh, since this alternator is internally regulated, this is what all came out of it. Stuff going to the regulator and all kinds of shit, this is just, uh, it's chopped out and gets replaced by those two wires. If you follow that wiring diagram that I'll send a link to, then instead, of having all that stuff. You got one clean wire going back, coming out here and just going into the harness. And then we've got these two that came with the new alternator and the uh, other one soldered in back further in the harness. The only other thing that you need to complete this conversion is, you see, like I said, take this. This is the big lead from the alternator. If you get all the way to this part in the Taurus, there's gonna be a mega fuse, which looks like this. You can just grab that from the junkyard if you wanna use it. Uh, I didn't. This, I got at O'Reilly's for five bucks. It's 175 amp mega fuse, and that goes at the end, and that's, you have to have that to do this conversion. So, once everything gets put back in, this, just notice how that works. So, the alternator was like $25, this was five bucks, and then uh, some soldering and some tape, about 30 bucks, you do the upgrade. And you have a uh, 3G 130 amp alternator set up and you can run an electric fan and air conditioning and a big loud stereo system or whatever the hell your heart desires. Something else that dad managed to uh, accomplish despite the intense heat was mounting this new power steering cooler. Like I said, this was a transmission cooler from a heavy duty uh, work truck. Bent the ears around. It's, it's mounted at kind of an angle so that this screw here doesn't hit the blades, so you might have to put it down at an angle if you have one like ours. And the, uh, the hoses look right in here. Now for the higher pressure line, we'll have to have something that connects from this threaded part of the back of the pump down into the rack on the Crown Vic. Now unfortunately I lost the hose that went to this pump originally. I think I might have accidentally sold it with the gearbox and uh, the line that we had coming out of here was the fitting was broken. So I'm going to have to talk to an auto parts store about getting one made, find out if I have to get the parts, the fittings from the junkyard for them to make it or if they just have the fittings on the shelf. But once that happens, uh, I'll do a video about how that worked out for us. It's really, really fucking hot. Uh, I'm sweating like a pig. <laughs> uh, slowly but surely it's coming together. It's getting ready to be ready. So uh, I'll keep the updates as I can, but they might end up being truncated like this uh, until it cools down enough to actually run this camera for more than five minutes without destroying it. I've been getting a lot of questions about stuff. By all means, if you have a question, uh, and I have an answer, shoot it to me. I'll be glad to tell you what I did or what I'm gonna do. Uh, we've spent several hours researching everything on this. Never done it before, but it seems like uh, these videos are helping some people. So if you got a question or something I skipped or you wanna know, by all means, just pop on the comments and I'll check them every day usually. So thanks for the likes, views, and subscribes. Appreciate it. Glad to help.